Ideal mesmo para o mundo atual seria fazer o ensino médio junto com o curso técnico, certo? É no SENAC que o aluno tem autonomia de verdade, formação cidadã, foco na diversidade, preparação para o Enem, material didático sem taxas e muito mais. Na real, tem tudo que você precisa para se sentir preparado para a vida. Seja para entrar no mundo do trabalho ou te ajudar a decidir o que fazer na faculdade. Quer saber? SENAC. Vem comigo. Acesse sp.senac.br barra ensino traço médio traço técnico. Sair da escola já com uma formação profissional no currículo parece bom demais para ser verdade, né? Pois é. No ensino técnico do SENAC, isso é possível. É ensino médio junto com formação técnica, que acontece durante os três anos. Lá, eles usam a metodologia para projetos, desenvolvendo competências como resolução de problemas, pensamento crítico e colaboração, além de valores éticos e sustentáveis. Quer saber? SENAC. Acesse sp.senac.br barra ensino médio e saiba mais. RH, quer saber como voar no trabalho? É só usar a Flash. Com a Flash, você concentra toda a gestão de pessoas em um único lugar. Faça admissão dos colaboradores e solicite mais de oito categorias de benefícios. Ah, e você ainda pode fazer todo o controle de ponto. Conheça o novo onboarding integrado da Flash em flashapp.com.br. I knew it. Another Heard at Media Production. Hi Chantal. Hey Rexian. I'm. I have o- a. Com- what? Well, I was gonna say I'm over you. I know you guys. She's just. You know, I'm about to get fired from all my jobs, my <laughs> podcasting, my real job, my oh life. My, uh... I well, first of all, I just want to tell you guys I'm a little buzz, and um, that's just because. Um, oh my god! I'm at, I know. <laughs> Jesus, I'm at this, you guys! I came home yesterday morning, so Wednesday morning. Today's Thursday night. And she was I in slept... California, so she came yeah. home from California. Yeah, for like I was there for like five nights, six days, whatever. So I had a total of like not even 24 hours in my home. I went to work this morning, and then we had these plans of there's like this like casino two hours away from my house. It was like Arabic concerts were staying hotel, and it's a Thursday. Night. Like the past, like you know, quarter, like months, like we don't, me and Roxanne don't go out on Thursday nights, especially myself. Like I, I've tried on many of plans because Thursday nights are a hard night. We try to plan, we try to do, you know, OC, our Patreons all on Thursday. So Roxanne wants to kick my ass because the Chantal two Thursdays says, Chantal in a row. says that we're, we don't. So okay, yeah, we record like three episodes on a Thursday. She. At like every Thursday has something. No, no, no. My friends can can um back me up. There's so many Thursdays, Roxanne's, especially Thursdays are nights to go out sometimes. I've said no multiple times. So I'm like, it's not even worth it. Like, let me just let me just do my my things and we have the weekend, you know? But you guys, in my defense, I asked Roxanne to come on this this little staycation for her and her husband to get away from the kids and celebrate his birthday. And he was on vacation. So if they were on here right now, we wouldn't be having this discussion. We would just be doing it the next day. Well, okay, first off, he's not on vacation, okay? He's on a work he, trip. <laughs> he's on he's at a 4-day conference meaning Roxanne is at home working her corporate 8 to 5 and then taking care of four kids yeah. all by herself. And I am tired. I am in a mood. I've been in a mood this week. Uh my husband for some reason it was his birthday. He turned 34. He thought I was flying to Arizona <laughs> to surprise him at this conference for his birthday. And I was like, I'm not coming. I don't know why even on the day of his birthday, he's like, Are you like, are you like playing a joke on me right now? Like, are you gonna like show up in the lobby at my hotel? I'm like, no, I'm I I am with our four kids. I don't have anyone to watch our children. Like, I'm not coming. So um, I have been at home with four kids. Chantel's been in California living her best life. And then now she goes on this trip. (laughs) And I'm like, you guys, I'm not happy. I'm not happy about it either. Trust me. Like I was dying. I was literally like miserable. I was like, do we really, we paid for this thing. So it's like, I'm like, do we really have to do this? I was like, I don't even care about the money. Like to my husband, I was like, I don't even care about the money. Let's just like stay at home. And he looked at me like I was crazy because he doesn't like to stay home either. And I'm just like, oh my God. And right now he's still down there. He's like getting our casino credits. And I was like, I have to go up and record this podcast. I was like, I'm not like not doing it. And I warned him. I was like, if you want me to go, I'm going to leave throughout the concert and go up. So sorry. 
And then even tomorrow we have to wake up so early to record even more. So I'm like, and and she's uh, she's always away when we're recording. So I'm like, yeah. oh my god, it's so funny because on our Patreon, Chantal like promised people that we were gonna start doing videos together, but it is impossible to do videos together where we actually show our faces. I can Chantal get on right now. Home. No, no, no. I can Chantal get on right now. Home. I look okay. cute. I'm ready. I can get on right now. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Can you? Well, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I definitely exactly. cannot. Uh, I also got um a facial treatment today, so no, I definitely. Oh yeah, can't. you look crazy. Yeah, so I'm all like burned up looking. I'm all like Tamara looking, but not really. Um, so Chantel's uh, Wi-Fi at that hotel was not working. We had to just switch because again, we didn't want any complaints of from our viewers about the network. So, um, what I was saying though, was Chantel, that Teddy stuff was real. Like she actually did cheat on her husband. I know. I saw that. That is crazy. And then they also claim that he cheated on her. So is this like a tit for tat situation? So here's the thing. It's, uh, it's funny because someone I think on our Patreon had commented that way back when Teddy had implied that her husband back in the day may have cheated. And then Tamara was like, are you trying to say your husband cheated before? And she kind of like stopped it and, and didn't say anything. And that goes to, tells me that she was okay with even saying that because she was doing something behind his back at that very moment and was cheating. So that's why, cause you know, typically that's something you take to the grave. Like you're not going to put that out there. Yeah. But if, if you're, you're going to forgive somebody, you would. Right. Have. But if you're doing it and it happened in the past, you don't care to bring it up just in case, like it does come out that you are cheating. Yeah. So, she is she was definitely cheating on her husband so yes he maybe he did in the past maybe he did in the beginning of their relationship but right now she was cheating on her husband and that's whatever that's their thing this husband was married and with a pregnant wife who was giving birth <gasps> while they were yes while Teddy was having a relationship with and this, this man. This is the this is the horse trainer that everyone the kept horse keeps trainer. alleging. Yep, yeah, yep. So that yeah. is cool. I didn't. Wow, I didn't know his wife was pregnant. I knew he was married. Yeah, I did not. Do you she, think that he's gonna leave this wife for Teddy? Um, no, I don't think it ever works out like that. Yeah. I don't either. Teddy's now coming out saying there's multiple sides to every story, which it's like, Teddy. Yeah, but no. No matter what, this man was had a pregnant wife. Even if he came and he told you, like, oh, we're having issues, then get a divorce, you guys. Like, what is the problem? Get a divorce and say, this isn't working out. And you know what? I'm talking to this girl and I feel this type of way before it gets to the next level. Like, I know I'm going to do something wrong. Like, let's get out of this relationship. So it's like, get a divorce. Like, his wife is heavily pregnant. Imagine right now, one of the housewives were doing that and Teddy's on her two T's in a pod and she's, she's talking about the scenario. She would be going ham and saying, how dare that housewife do that when the man is married and it, 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 like a baby's on the way and she's pushing out the baby, you know, Teddy would be going off, you know? Yeah. So it's, like, it's, it's so fucked up. It really just is. And it's like, and if guys are telling these girls like, oh, I'm not with my wife, that let's show proof. Let's show proof that you're not with your wife. Yeah, I know. I'm not trying to sit there and blame just the girl, but like also the woman is just as responsible as the man. I don't think anyone is like more responsible. They're both married. So they're both like shitty people for yeah. that. Um, and if if Edwin did cheat, which to me, it sounds like Edwin cheated in the beginning of their relationship. You chose to forgive him and you chose to have a third child with him. OK, so it's not and I could be wrong about the timeline, but it sounds like when he did cheat, it was a long time ago. But it's like you chose to forgive him and maybe even if it was recent, right? Like you chose to forgive him or you chose to stay with him, but then you're going to go cheat. Like that's get out of the relationship. Get yeah, out of the relationship. Two wrongs, two wrongs don't make a right yeah. ever. So. And we don't know. Nothing has come out about Edwin. Whereas, and we know the horse trainer. Um, by tomorrow on all about com, we'll have the full story on it. So if it's Friday, go take a look at it. Um, crazy, crazy, crazy. 
I wish she was on Beverly Hills just to see the tea on it, but wow. No, don't say that. Don't put that out there, Chanel. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> no one wants Teddy back on Beverly Hills. Do not put that energy out there. <laughs> I promise you no one wants that. And people are saying that. You guys, you know what's the most ick part of all of this? Is that Teddy stage paparazzi photos uh, at TMZ got them. And they're literally stage photos of her standing outside of her house while Edwin gives her a kiss on the head. And she has a luggage waiting for a car. Oh my God! Stop it, you guys. I'm sorry. I'm this sorry. This is like These too much. Yeah, These yeah. Are this is like, you're a loser. You do you have do, people are so obsessed with fame. The way that they end up doing things like you have kids. You look like a moron. Like when your kids get older and they see that, they're like, "Mom, like, why would you ever agree to this?" Uh huh. I agree. Yeah. By the way, Chantel, before we get into Orange County, because we are going to start with Orange County just because we just watched it. It is No, fresh. no, no, no. I'm just kidding. We can. Um, uh, I just want to know from parents, do you guys do drop off and pick up? Because if you do both, you guys are saints. Like waking up every morning now that Jacob has been. First off, Jacob, you know, Sloan told someone at school that her dad's dead. <gasps> you guys what's wrong with children wait what's no what's wrong with sloan <laughs> you guys what is wrong with my second child uh, oh my god why like, would she say that i don't know my sister-in-law had texted us and she was like hey is everything okay with jacob and i was like why and she's like sloan told one of their classmates that he died and i was like no like everything is completely okay and jacob was like what and i'm like you know, obviously, like, my husband doesn't leave the house, <laughs> so they're not used to him not being at home. But I looked at her, and I said, Sloan, why would you tell one of your classmates that? And then she's like, it was a joke. And I'm like, Sloan, you're four. This is not a joke. Like, you don't say something <laughs> like that. And I don't know. She, you guys, that second child, can anyone relate to this? But anyways, my whole thing is now that I've been a single mom for the last four days, is that what it is, a single mom or whatever? A yeah, mom. Okay. So I am having to get all the four kids ready and then take the two to Montessori, then take the two to their school. And then I, I don't know how parents actually do drop off and pick up. So like, I hope that that's not the case, but the last four days have made me miserable. I know. I really feel bad for you. And I wasn't here to ever help you. And then I know. And then um, Laura's like on vacation. So I've taken over like all about com. So I'm just like, and then I work and I'm like, and then work has been so busy for us all of a sudden. So I'm like, oh my gosh. So I don't know. Just shout out to the parents. I like always want to give you guys credit because what we do as parents is crazy. Um, no, it really is. It truly, it really, truly, truly, truly is. Really like, is. I, if I ever complain, I think about you guys and I'm just like, I can't complain, but it just, it really is crazy. It is. I'm tired, man. I'm tired. I know. Um, Okay, so another thing I wanted to bring up before we bring up OC, I'm going to have to tell, like, all our viewers to skip forward to just go into the recaps if they want to. But, Chantal, Andy Cohen and Kelly Dodd are getting, like, got into it. So, um, I don't know. It's about, like, some political shit. I don't know. But Andy, apparently, he has Cyrus XM, and he has, like, a, a co-host. I've never heard of this co-host. And someone on Twitter was like, how have you not ever heard of this co-host if you're a fan of Andy? I mean, I'm not a fan of Andy I don't like follow his life. I know nothing about him. I really don't accept what we see on Watch What Happens Live. So I don't, I don't listen to his Cyrus XM. I, I don't know what the hell. I only, if I get clips or we do get emails from Cyrus XM, like when it comes to them, their promo people tell us so that we could write stories about their, what was discussed, which is, is great. But aside from that, I don't actually listen to it. So apparently he called Kelly Dodd a fat pig, not Andy, the co-host and then okay. andy, andy was like well she's a pig not like <gasps> a fat pig but um i don't know i kind of thought that was gross but at the same time kelly always says it about other people too but it's it's like gross when men do it like when men talk about women like that like when women are talking about you know women yeah it's not great but when like this guy calling her fat she literally the next morning chantal went on a scale and it said 126 Oh my gosh. I mean, I think it was, I mean, like clearly they're not talking about your weight. You know, they're talking more just probably about like, you know, like when you're like a pig or like a slob. I don't know that whether, I think that's what they're trying to say. I don't think they're trying to call her fat. I don't know what you just said, Chantel, because that made no sense. No, I'm saying like when someone they calls. They literally said a fat pig. So yeah, but you're then, calling him a pig, but you're no, but then a fat pig. 
No, but then he says not a fat, not fat, well, but no, a pig. Andy, but, but then Andy responds, yeah. like, take out the fat because she's not fat. Yeah. So then that's what I'm saying. When you call someone a pig, it's like they're sloppy almost. Cause like pigs are like in dirt. And, yeah. Like, so sloppy yeah. and fat are two different things though. Yeah, I know. I'm saying so like for her to get on the, on the scale, it's like, we all know you're skinny. Is what right, I'm trying but, to say. Right, but still, like, I mean, if a man's, like, sitting here calling you fat, and you're, like, really? You're going to call, like, someone who's 126 pounds fat? Like, imagine what you think about other people. I mean, I don't think that was weird that she did that. I think, I mean, I, I don't, again, there was, like, it was, like, some political debate. I mean, Andy really gets into his politics. Kelly really I gets think, into his politics. I think in general, yeah, I think in general for Andy, it's, like, you're the boss at the end of the day. These are all your past, like, employees and, like, whatever. So it's, like... You should never talk about them bad or, like, bad at all to anybody. It's funny, though, because, like, Kelly is so intense with politics, but so is Andy. So they're both, like, they both just need to stop with the politics stuff because they're both so intense with it. And, like, these type of platforms, like, it's not the platforms to be that intense. Like, we don't want to hear it from either side. So um, I actually think they're very much, like, the same person. <laughs> I really do. Um, okay, let's get into the Orange County reunion, though, because, yes. yeah, a lot happened. So, um, Chantal, I know you're editing this. We're going to have to, oh, I'll write the write up. Um, so what I find so scary, Chantal, is that when I'm watching the reunion, Jen defends her man. And while she's defending him, Emily's so riled up. And she's like, you don't need to stand by your man. But to me, I'm looking at Emily and I'm like, what's it to you? If she defends her man, are you, a, what is up your asshole this reunion? I, I really don't understand it. Like, I look at her and I'm like, like you just said, like, what is wrong with you? Why are you, you so triggered? <laughs> How much did you drink today, by the way? You no. don't sound drunk at all, though. I'm just wondering. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just wondering, what did you drink today? <laughs> Just a few. Okay. Did you eat? Yeah, yeah. I always okay, eat. Okay, well, that's good. I, well, it's funny because I have a question about drinking for you later on in, in my notes. But anyways, so that's weird that you're drunk right now. I mean, buzz. Um, so Tamara's probably so happy that Emily's taking the throne as me. Yeah, she's, she's yeah. doing her dirty work. Exactly. Jen says that Katie could be honest when it comes to Ryan because they ask Katie, like, what are your thoughts about everything? And Emily responds, yeah, Katie, be honest for once. And I was just like, hold me back, Emily. Like, hold me back. Like, you're really trying to secure your spot next season. And I need you to back the F down. No, it, it didn't help her secure a spot because, like, everyone's looking at her like, what is wrong with you? Like, you like, literally look mad. so scary. Yeah. yeah. Something is truly, you're mad in your life. Like, you really did something. You really are not, like, no one's understanding where you're coming from. Like, you really are coming from left field with everybody. It makes no sense. I think she's not happy with herself um, and she doesn't seem as confident. It's like weird. Anyway, what, so, are, what are you eating over there? No, I just opened up a Slim Jim. Oh, okay. So you're eating. <laughs> no, I'm not eating. I just opened it up so I could get ready. So when you talk, I can take a bite. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Tamara's probably, um, oh, wait, I already said that. Okay. So Heather's acting like she cares about Jen and that's why, you know, she has expressed concern about Ryan. And it's like Heather really never had that type of relationship with Jen. So it it doesn't it's not genuine the concern yeah and i feel like jen's very very aware of what's happening she knows how to talk she knows what she's saying she knows what she's doing she's not like she's not dumb like she doesn't come off dumb to me so it's like all of your guys's concerns need to go away or them trying and, to make her like she's dumb yeah exactly and it's like if something actually really does happen then you guys can be concerned but nothing has ever happened yet all we've seen is this guy take care of her and her her five kids yeah and them being really lovey-dovey and happy with each other. And they're engaged. They're, they're engaged, you guys. We're Team Ryan until we die. So it's like, just, we don't want it. We don't want to hear it anymore. Ha um, so Tamara's ex explanation about how she responded to that Watch What Happens Live comment was such a lie. Tamara was served with a cease and desist from Ryan. Um, uh, and, and she said that on Watch What Happens Live, she messed up her words. And she didn't realize she said Ryan's actual name until Eddie told her she said Ryan's name. So mm -hmm. she did apologize. She was just, it was the dumbest thing I've ever heard. But um, we're glad she did, though, because, like, she, she should say that in front of national television, just in case, like, people are not on social media seeing things. By the way, so Tamara is going after this account, Chantel. I'm not going to say this account or anything, but um, actually, I will text it to you just so that you know. Wait, I don't even know if you could read it because you're on your phone. Yeah, but I can. Ta oh, so Tamara's going after this account because this account, you know, there was not many people who have had Tamara's back at all this the past, like, 
um, the season. So she's had like maybe like four fan accounts who've had her back. And apparently this account was one of them. So yeah. Um, apparently like Tamara had her on her podcast to thank her. And I was like, that's so weird. Again, once they, here's the thing, when you like get fan accounts to come on your podcast, it's never a good thing because these, uh, some accounts are actually truly unhinged. We've seen it ourselves. You know, when, here's how I look at it. If you don't have a life outside of this show and this show was like your entire life, I feel like you could be like, well, at least what we saw with the trolls, like it, it, it's a lot. Like it's it a consumes lot. people, and like yeah. then they get excited about like the attention. They get excited yes. about so. certain things. People are paying attention, so then they get even more unhinged. And you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa! So, Let's go out and get Starbucks, yeah. okay, people? Let's go out with a friend and I get know. some coffee. <laughs> I know. So the one thing that I could agree with Tamara is so Tamara like said that this account has been harassing her, and I looked at what who the account was, and I was like. Tamara's 100% right that this is an unstable person who, not that she's unstable, I don't know if that's the right word, but anytime someone has ever came out and attacked me and Chantel, we were fine with this person. They had said they wanted us to go, I don't know if they have a podcast, I don't think they have a podcast or they wanted to come on our podcast or something. And we were just like, you know, we're like really busy. We were so friendly and nice to them. And then someone, I think it was when the Dave Yonta stuff came out and what he like you know came for us like then she involved herself and she came for us and then when those like trolls came for us that turned on Teresa she came for us and she was talking shit about us and like inserting herself at any time there has ever been a situation where someone has came for us she always would come and talk so much shit about us and we're like who are you like why are you inserting yourself and talking about us like like for example there were these two content creators i'm sure some of you guys know that were fighting uh that are in this bravo world that was like up and adam and zach i don't know much about it so i'm not going to comment on it regardless though i would not chime in and comment on that okay yeah. because like that's between them like i'm not gonna sit there and make one feel like shit and be like oh you're right and pick sides and yada yada i'm not doing that like you know like we're all like in this community together like we're not about to Hey, like you guys, hopefully you guys figure this out, but this is between them two and that's it. So, you know, like if like, let's say a housewife, like I, I know when Tamara came for Christian, I, I know we got like a little, we were on his podcast, but we got, you know, we have a relationship with him. We got protective, but that's like a housewife coming. But if there's like things happening with content creators and like, I'm seeing people be so mean to them and people attacking this one content creator like i'm not gonna sit here and insert myself in everything so this person literally inserts themselves in every single thing possible for clout for attention and it also tells me like there's no loyalty in this you know in this new age like i've been doing this for 12 13 years like when i have a relationship with someone i have a relationship like i have morals like i am not going to you know sit there and be like Hey, maybe I can get clout by turning on this person. Like, I like, no, dude, we're all going to die one day. Like, none of this is going to matter. We're going to be irrelevant tomorrow. Like, none of this matters for the attention that we could get. So for anyone who doesn't know, like a lot of people on X knows this account. And I don't care what this account says about us. We've gotten the worst set about us, our children from the trolls that she associated herself with. But this account is someone who does harass and who does do things for clout. And that is the only thing that I will stand by Tamara is that Tamara's an idiot and got this person to come on her podcast because Tamara does have relationship with fan accounts and does talk to fan accounts. And this just proves it right here. Yeah. Um, and that fan account turned on her just like, you know, and she's associated with those fan accounts that turned on Teresa. So um it's all a lot and it's just you know it, it's too much so i just wanted to point that out because you know i, I do see people who hate tamra so much and they're like oh tamra um is going after this like fan account no this fan account is so freaking vile and mean period. and it really is messed up but it's like if you had her back from the beginning unless she did something to you personally like what what happened exactly. what changed you just went on she gave you the opportunity to go on her podcast her podcast does pretty well like we would never do something like that. We've talked we would be to so every, silent. We'd be so we've silent talked about to it. every single housewife that you could think of. We've had conversations that, yeah, maybe like, you know, like that was weird when they said, no, we're not putting it out. We're not doing that. Like we're not doing that. So uh, I don't know. Here's my little rant on that. Yeah, no, it really is crazy. This world's nuts. It really is. Okay. So anyways, um, 
What else were you we saying? We were talking about, uh, by the way, it was funny when Jen clocked Tamara by reminding her that she wasn't faithful to Simon and Tamara had nothing to Ooh, say. Yeah. No, because she she said it for a point. Like, what was her point? She Her point was, um, I didn't write notes on it. I, I don't just know. Literally watched, it but... was just like, yeah, basically, like, you're not oh, one no. to talk. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because she was trying to say something about Ryan, like, doing something. It's like, you cheated on your ex-husband. So what yeah. does that make you? Does that make you not yeah. a person of, like, someone that could be credible because you cheated? Like, no, shut up. Yeah. Um, she did so well. Like, I really, like, literally MVP of the season, MVP for the reunion. Like, she held herself so well. I'm so proud of her. Yeah. The night at Katie's dinner, Tamara says that she was so drunk she doesn't even remember it. Chantel, have you ever been so drunk where you blacked out? Not me, personally. I, I'm not a browned out type girl. Okay. Really? Yeah, no, I've never. Like, I could drink, drink, drink. Like, I could probably remember one time. I, no, I've never. Like, I've always remembered my, my night. But I know people can. People get there. So it's not impossible. I mean, I feel like that wedding I went to, Chantal, I blacked out. Yeah, you, you've you always been like that, though. I think certain people really do brown out, black out. Like, brown out's like where you kind of, like, sometimes remember. Yeah, I'm like, remember? what's brown out? Like, who, yeah. who, who made this term? No, like, no, it's a term. Why are like this? No, no, you guys, let her know because she sometimes doesn't understand things. But when you say you browned out, that means, like, you remember some things and you don't remember all everything. But when you black out, it's like you don't remember anything at all. Okay, so I think I browned out. Yeah, you brown out at all the that time. wedding. Yeah, I brown out quite a bit, and you know why? Because I am the type of person. I don't know how my husband. My husband can eat, and then he will drink, and he's like buzz as hell. If I put anything in my mouth, I cannot get buzzed. So is it's that like, why you asked me? Because like I can, like I ate tonight, and I'm so buzzed. See, I can't. It's so weird. So it's like I won't. I'll have like an empty stomach, and I'll drink, but then I'll brown out. Yeah, so you kind of have to find the balance. Maybe eat, like, something. Like, uh, like a cookie? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Um, Jen reveals that that night that Tamara blacked out, Eddie was so mad at her that he didn't even sleep with her. And she was like, I I don't, I don't, maybe he didn't. I don't know. I'm like, oh, my gosh. But Yeah, it's like, why are you lying? Like, just own it at that point. If you, like, do you really not remember? Because clearly you did. You, like, said it. She like, goes, she, like, changed her story. Like, no, he didn't sleep there. My, my, my daughter does. Oh, maybe he slept on the couch. She's like, okay, what is it? Yeah. He was mad but at you. You were, you were embarrassing to him. Yeah, that's something, like, my husband would for sure hundred percent. It's not like... that big of a deal. Like, <laughs> like if my husband acted like that, too, I'd be pissed as hell. It's, it's but fine. But my husband's, like, the type who'd be like, no, I'm not leaving this bed. So if you want to leave, you can sleep on the couch. <laughs> and I'd be like, no. I'm like, what? No. Like, I've, I've been mad at my husband before, and I'd be like, go sleep on the couch. And he's like, no, but, like, if you want to, you can. And I'm like, I'm not sleeping <laughs> on the damn couch. And so we both just sleep in the bed. He's like, I'm not going anywhere. And I'm like, you're stuck. I'm like, oh, my God. A <laughs> Um. So Emily was truly cringe on this reunion. There's a point where they talk about the background check. And Shannon's, you know, a part in it. And Jen says the difference with moving on with Shannon is that Shannon means it. Like, she can own her part and move forward. And then in comes aggressive, loud Emily. And she's like, you only said sorry because I yelled at you outside to recognize. And we see a clip of Emmy give, uh, Emmy, Emily giving her opinion as usual. And Shannon saying, yeah, I recognize that. But in what universe does that mean Shannon was genuine in apologizing to Jen because of Emily? It was, yeah, nothing. It was, it was such a reach that Emily would take credit for that. 100%. She's like, her hands are in everything. Like, every try to every drama, every, like, story. It's like, calm down, sit down, and, like, let's worry about yourself. What was your storyline this season? Like, losing weight? Pants? Being insecure? Yeah, I don't know. You lost weight, and you were more insecure than I've ever seen you before. I, do, I don't understand. Exactly. You. She needs to go to therapy to, like, really love herself, and it's sad. Yeah, so true. Jen is right. Everyone is scared of Tamara. Heather absolutely keeps Tamara closer for a reason. Tamara knows a lot and she's shown she has no loyalty to anyone and is willing to go low and expose everything. I don't blame Heather, to be honest. I can only imagine the shit that Tamara has heard or known about Heather, maybe Heather's marriage, just things like that. So in last season, Heather said that she was like scared of Tamara. So I don't know why her opinion changed this season where she's like, I'm not scared. That's not, I wouldn't say a historically good friend. I'm like, dude, that sounds exactly like something you would say. Listen, Heather, sweetie, good luck. Have fun with your friend friend. You guys are friend friends. That's what she said. I can't wait for her to, um, to shit on you again and no one's going to have your back. So have fun. Bye. She, she will. 
Like, you know, I feel bad because I like Heather. And I'm like, Heather, what is wrong with you this season? I know. Uh, um, I'm dying that Tamara is conveniently starting therapy one day after they record this. Like, of course, just so that she could bring this up. I, I can't. But I didn't see her like I didn't see like, yeah, she did give apologies, but I didn't see her be this like remorseful. Like she had her guard up 100 percent still and like did not care. Yeah. Jen is talking about how she knows when to pay her bills, like her car payment. And then Emily jumps down her throat because they're talking about her finances. And Emily is like, but I thought you have Ryan's car. So how can you be paying for your car payment if you have Ryan's car? And it's like when she told everyone that Katie moved out of Orange County. Why are you so focused on every detail of all these ladies lives? 100 percent especially because she just shitted on you like 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 30 minutes ago and said that you're in lost pay for your life so stop worrying about it did you know chantal that jen's i by the way i take it emily didn't hear that because times we've seen Teresa on new jersey not react and it's literally because she didn't hear what the other person yeah. was saying um and she said that but um did you know chantal that jen's ex-husband was an attorney no, I didn't know that's, like, what he did for her family then. Like, what was he doing for her family? I'm sure he, yeah, probably was the attorney for their whatever wow. it was. But I didn't know that. And he's not paying child support. And as an attorney, not to be covering those costs, you can get reprimanded. So I don't know. That was crazy. I, I did not know that. Yeah. Uh, and, he, and you know he's, like, still so bitter. He refuses to speak to Jen. Is he, I think probably because, like, he's jealous or he's he's upset still. I mean, yeah, like, he probably, I mean, he's moved on. He's in a relationship right now. But... Yeah, I'm sure he, like, sees Jen and, like, Jen's living her best life with her husband. And I'm sure he's dying. Like, that was his wife of, like, how many years? I mean, with Ryan. So, like, I'm sure it's hard for him. But he's moved on. So, it's, like, get over it, you know? Yeah. You've moved on. And it goes to show you what kind of person Jen is because she's very respectful when she speaks about her ex. And all the ladies do say this. Yeah, Emily and, and, was, like, finally nice. Like, that is one thing she is. And I'm like, yeah, shut up. Like, I shut know. up. No one wants to hear you over there. I swear. And then Jen's like, well, we have five people in between us. And I love that because coming from a family of divorce, there was a point where I even looked at my mom. And this is when I was young because they got divorced at 16. And I was like, mom you literally hate my dad more than you love us because of like what you're doing right now. And obviously so much has changed now. And you know, it was like in the like heat of things. So when I see someone like Jen, who's going through it and going out of her way to be respectful towards her ex for the sake of her kids, like when her kids grow up and they really understand, they're going to be like, mom, you're such a superhero for doing that. 100%. And then they're going to acknowledge and know things too. Like, you know, when it, when my parents first got divorced, like it was like, I don't know. I, I, I like was more on my dad's side, but like, you know, now that I'm older too, and you know, I see things like, you know, now I, I understand things and I'm like, well, I can understand why she'd react those ways, you know? So, um, I just feel like the way that you act towards your kids during that time, when you get older, they're going to like appreciate it. So are you Agreed. good, Chantel? Okay, yeah, no, wow. I agree. Okay. Let's move uh, on. <laughs> all right. Chantel's like, okay, don't we still have We still have Salt Lake City to cover. And you're, you're, you're rambling over there. I'm sorry. Um, they want, okay, so they want, they keep saying, we want, Jen, we just want you to take matters in your own hands. But it's like, you're still owed money from your ex. So even if you do take matters into your own hands, that was your money too. So yeah, like you, you like, you think of your life as like, okay, I have X amount coming from here. I have X amount coming from here. I have this, like you think of your life that way and you think that's what you can spend. So like sue her poor girl. Yeah. Like they shouldn't be treating her the way they are. And I just like, it's so, especially Gina, when Gina does literally, it, I literally laugh, yeah. I laugh. I'm like, Oh my God. Um, with her like real estate, Heather tells Katie, she wasn't being a mean girl telling Tamara how much a dress costs. What do you think? Yeah, mean girl. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. You know, this time of year is all about gratitude, and I want to take a moment to shout out someone important in my life, someone who helps keep me things in perspective, and you know, that girl is Roxanne. You know, we are together through thick and thin, and she deserves a shout out, and for me to tell her how important she is in my life. 
But another person we don't always take time to appreciate is ourselves. It's not easy navigating life's ups and downs, and sometimes we forget to give ourselves credit. That's where therapy can come in, helping us develop coping skills, set boundaries, and just feel more empowered. If you've ever thought about starting therapy, BetterHelp is a great option to try. It's completely online, designed to fit your schedule, and super convenient. You can get matched with a licensed therapist by filling out a quick questionnaire. And if it's not the right fit, you can switch at any time with no extra charge. Let the gratitude flow with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash TRH to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash TRH. You think so? Yeah, I think, or maybe she's just being funny, like, oh, her dress cost 2000 but clearly that was, like, the, the discussion of the whole season of, like, yeah. Katie, can't, or um, John can't afford it, why is John doing that? So, like, yeah, you are being a mean girl, like, you want to show it, you want to make it, like, make her seem like she's living way beyond her means. I was eating a Slim Jim, so that's why I was, like, waiting for you yeah. to talk more. Uh-huh. Sorry. <laughs> um, okay, so Emily, um, so we, okay, so that, let's get to the Emily segment, they, they talk about the Katie line stuff. And we touched on this a little bit, but Emily's former nanny spoke out. So she reached out to us directly and she told us, and by the way, she sent us photos of her and the kids to, you know, confirm like who she is and um, like the, you know, the house, like all that stuff. So we did, we, we're not going to put that out. We're not going to put like pictures of the nanny with the kids. Okay. We'll never do that. But it was clearly Emily's kids. And so she messages me and she's like, hey, I sent this to Katie also, but just so you know, I moved to North Carolina. I've always been team Emily, but I feel so bad for Kylie. I'm disappointed on how Emily handled it. Her kiddos have full access to the internet, so I'm sure they found stuff on there. Annabelle would always look up her mom on the internet and I'd have to tell her to stay away from that. And she's like, I always thought they were cute that they knew. I always thought it was cute that they knew what was going on. They're very protective over their mom. Like what Kylie said, I also thought it was funny. Not a big deal. And then um, she shows me the message that she sent to Katie. And I don't know if Katie responded, but she had DM'd her and she said, hey, Katie, first off, you're an amazing addition to the franchise. We need more women like you. Also, if you want to share this with your daughter so she knows she's not crazy, I used to nanny Emily Simpson's kids and they always talked about how they hated Heather. Annabelle would give me all the juicy gossip. I feel a little bit disgusted that Emily was pointing the finger at your daughter when she was kind enough to watch the boys. That They ain't easy. Oh my God, the shade at the Boom. point. Boom. Wait, but she she was shading the little boys. Yeah, I mean, it's that. hard babysitting, you guys, no matter what. Like, it's a I hard know. job. We did it our lives, and, like, the yeah. kids are not easy. She says, but I just wanted to let you know that Emily is totally lying. The kids do know Heather. They know what's going on. I don't like your daughter taking the blame for that on TV, especially from Heather. So, and then again, I we saw photos of this nanny with Emily's kids. She nannied them for a little bit, and she moved to a different state. That's why she doesn't nanny them anymore. So this goes to show you that Emily is a liar. And there was a there was a scene, you guys, where Andy Cohen says, "Don't you guys all speak in front of your children?" And he was so real for that because, and all of them, all of them were like, "No, we don't. Never. We would never say anything in front of our kids. Never." It's like you guys are on the Royal Housewives of Orange County on cable TV where your kids see everything. Stop acting like you guys and are these you're perfect being people, filmed. please. Like, uh. Yeah, and you're being filmed. Like they're old enough to know. Like why is your camera? I was like, your four year old would know, like, why is your camera in my face? Well, it's not about that, though. It's just, but it's like, like, makes them curious. It makes them curious of, like, what is that? Like, what are they on? Like, it would make you, like, want to know what's happening. Well, here's the thing. Like, I am someone, I don't get emotional very often, though, but I'm someone, like, if I came in the house and I'm, like, crying, and let's say Charlie and Sloan are in the other room. But they're in the other room, like they get, and I'm talking to my husband. I probably wouldn't be able to be like, let me just wait till they sleep. Like, I'd probably be like talking about it. And I'm like, they're in the other room, like playing with Legos, but they could still be listening, you know? So, again, very rarely does that happen where I'm actually upset like that. Um, I think when the troll stuff happened, I didn't even talk about that with my husband because I was just like <laughs> numb to it, though. Um, but I don't it know. It happens. It exactly. happens. Exactly. That's, that's what it is. So it was like, he was real because he was like, don't you guys, like, come on, you know? Um, you know what? Andy was very quiet on this reunion. Like, he barely, like, chimed in, which is weird. Yeah. The only thing, by the way, that would cause damage to Emily's relationship with Heather is the stuff Emily continued to say badly about Heather behind her back, and they're trying to pin that on Katie. Yeah, it's like, you don't like her, just own it. Yeah. They talk about the TikToks that Katie's daughter did, where it's like a voiceover, and it throws shade at who Katie works with, and Katie's like, listen, she's 20, I don't approve of that, and in comes Tamara, you guys. Tamara's like, even Sophia was a little disgusted. Tamara, no one gives a crap. Um, did, what, what does Sophia think about you this entire season? What yeah. does Sophia think about you talking 
about Simon. And about we talked dad. about it with we talked about it with Kai on our on our podcast. If you haven't listened to it, and like you could tell, she's a little bit like yeah, she she is young. Like she was innocent about it. Like she just did this like voiceover. Well, she probably barely TikTok, knows what she's doing. That's like what every single yeah. person on TikTok does. Like those are the trends that they do. And they're just know, jealous she has a lot of followers. Like she, yeah, she, she, she has more like, followers. She's like TikTok famous, you guys. And she has more followers than like a lot of housewives. So so sorry. Yeah. And she's not TikTok famous because of the housewives. It's because she just got, you know, like yeah. people get big on TikTok. So um yeah, like should she have put that caption? Eh, probably not. It's not worth it because look what Katie's dealing with now. But all of them, man. All of them were quick to be like, I would kill my kid. I mean, listen, I would not let my kid either, and I'd make them probably delete it. I don't know. I, I don't know. She's twenty years old though. Like, what, what am I? Gonna yeah, do? I didn't think it was that deep, but it really wasn't. No, yeah. And then, but but that, but Tamara Chantel bringing up her daughter. Yeah. So, no one gives a like. Who, oh, it's so. You, it's your so the moral so is disgusted. So, yeah, it's right. so the moral no. high ground. Does she know everything that's going on? Like, she didn't oh talk to her gosh. dad. Look what you like sit there and say about your ex on TV. Like, look what you you've thrown everyone under the bus, including her older sister. Like, that's disgusting. No one cares. Um, but so Alexis comes out and you know what, Chantal, with Alexis coming out, what I realized was I don't need Alexis on the show. I really don't because they talked about the same shit that we've been talking about. So it's like, I don't, I don't care to discuss it, but it's like, I'm fine with her not being on it, but she conveniently Chantal is getting married within 12 months to make yeah. sure she secures her spot next season. Yeah. She's like within 12 months. It was so funny. He's like, when's yeah. the date within 12 months. And, like, it was funny because Emily, again, like, she clearly was had problems with everyone. Like, her face was, like, they even mentioned, like, look at Emily's face. And she was dying. Yeah. When, like, um, when What's Her Name was talking about him. You know, you just did a gross call. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not talk, Slim Jim girl over there. <laughs> I know. And I, it's like, I'm using And, like, what kind of Slim Jim did you eat? A regular Slim Jim. Like, the Slim Jim brand? Yeah. Ew. What did you think? Uh, like a Choms? <laughs> Oh, I know. It's this is so bad for me. Like, ugh, I just it's like my weakness. Um. Okay. Anyways, let's talk Salt Lake City because no one cares about Alexis. Yeah. No. I seriously. I didn't even, like. I stopped at like that ten minute mark. But whatever. If, Did if you, you? If you want to just go through like main points because we all know that you're gone with the wind. Fabulous right now. I know, but I wrote a lot of notes, so I have to, like kind of go through them and read them. Oh god! Um, but did you see like how Salt Lake City? Sometimes they do that where it's like um, more than an hour. It was like an hour and fifteen minutes. Like why do they do that on random episodes? I don't understand that either, to be quite honest. I was watching and I was like, oh wait, is this still going? Is this still going? It but... was a long episode, but I didn't even realize that it was an hour and 15, but it, it did feel very, very, it was a great episode, but it felt very long. It was great, but I feel like it was the same. It was like, we'll talk about it. We continued with, you know, last week with John. Like he wants us to go if you don't stop. And Lisa saying the common denominator. Oh my God, Whitney. I accidentally muted you. I'm sorry. Oh, how did you do that? <laughs> I don't know. I didn't know I could do that. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Hey, bye. Sorry if you didn't hear her. Just, just who cares? Go on. Yeah. Well, I said we start with the, you know, the to keep to be continued of last week with John telling Lisa about the whole like we need like you know he wants us to leave if you don't act right and Lisa is like getting emotional. She's saying the common denominator is Whitney, and Lisa doesn't want to leave the trip early, so she's going to try to like come up with a great attitude. Do you think it was right for her to call like say Whitney is a common denominator with it? No, because it was wrong. I, I really don't think that when he was a common denominator. Yeah. Did, did you? I didn't. I didn't think so. No. Yeah. I don't really like. I feel like she's so low key. Like you know, maybe she's doing things behind the scenes that we don't know about. But like from what we're seeing, I don't see it that that, that much. Yeah, that way. Well, not for this situation, um, Bronwyn. I don't see it. I don't think so at all. Yeah. Well, we get we get to the scene of them sitting down for lunch. So this is like a scene. They're all sitting down, guys and girls, and. Lisa does go ahead and say that, like, she's trying to say about her feelings, and she does bring up Winnie. And then, like, Winnie, Winnie said to her, you charged with my husband, and Lisa said, my husband would never talk to me the way your husband did. And it was so awkward because the guys are standing there. Like, what did you feel about that? Listen, at the end of the day, I actually think Lisa was wrong in that situation. Like, she's the one who literally went up to the husband and said, um, I do think um, Winnie's husband's very thirsty, by the way. It's actually very scary. 
but like Lisa did charge him. So it was, uh, listen, I, 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 it was weird. And then he reacted weird, but so there should have been no apology. Like there wasn't like Lisa should have not been like, I'm owed an apology. Lisa's kind of being annoying this season. Yeah. Like they're, they're kind of all are a little bit, but I've never thought that about Lisa though. I'm shocked. Like, she yeah, just, she's not know. getting a great season for sure. The whole time though, guys, by the way, I'm dying wondering if Todd is going to snap and he's like, no, 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 this is not okay. And I'm just so scared because he guys, scares Todd me. Is not, no, I'm sorry. No, we have a cousin in law like this a little bit that we're scared of. And like, I'd be so scared to fight in front of him. You know what I'm talking about? I know exactly who you're talking about. Yeah. And it's like those type of people are very scary to like have to argue in front of because you know they're like just looking at you and you're like, hey. You feel so judged. You, you're scared. Yes. And it's like embarrassing. Like, there were so many scenes in Salt Lake City that Bronwyn looked embarrassed. Like, she yeah. was so embarrassed. And uh, I would hate that feeling to feel like embarrassed. And it's like, ugh. I mean, what did he think this show was? I'm so confused. I know. Lisa. Well, Lisa says, you said F to Winnie's husband. Like, what's his name again? Um, oh, um, Justin. Yeah, Justin. Lisa says oh to Justin, you God. said, like, fucking, fucking, fucking. And he denies that. And then John, who really is such a saint and has so much pac- patience, said, let's rewind and just ask a question. And he's like, Winnie ask lisa did she do this and then um when he's like did you do this and lisa goes no he goes it's done it's done then you know so um wow chantal thank you for like reenacting the scene yeah what also really scared me though <laughs> about the scene you guys because i'm thinking about it is angie's husband okay i love angie but like angie's husband sean we're like whoa okay you guys he, angie's husband was so wrong yeah he gets in he says like he didn't call you a bitch and i'm like what why is like or no no um he gets involved and basically says, like, you're a bully to to Angie. Like, I listened to your conversation no, and you're this a bully. Was wrong. I don't yeah. think it because here's the thing. If Joe Gorga did some shit like that, we'd all be going. We would crazy. call it out. Yeah. We'd all be like, what the fuck? Like, why are you even talking? Why are you even getting involved? So please do not because I saw a tweet and someone was like, We all need a husband like Angie. And I'm like, uh, you no. guys, like, stop it. Like, no, we it was don't. very it was very strange for him to bring this up. And I, I even said that. I was like, we preach it all the time that the boys have nothing to do with this to stay out of it. And that literally was it. Like, you're literally saying that Lisa abuses her. And it's like, okay, this has nothing guys, to do with the situation. So scary. It was like, it gave me John Fuda. I And I like Angie's husband. I still yeah. like him. But that was, like, so uncomfortable for me. No, the men were very Angie, unhinged this episode. Yeah, I think Angie feels like no one defends her. And honestly, no one does defend her. So, like... She, you could look but at she has she a, but she, yeah, but she has a mouth for her, herself, and she like knows how to defend herself, and like we all kind of agree with her half the time. So it's like, I hope she feels the love because a lot of people do like her, but especially this season. No, people um, didn't like Chandel the first two last seasons, season. We ra- yeah, yeah we ra- every time we raved about Angie, no one was feeling her at all, and now all of a sudden everyone likes her. Lisa says, "If I hurt you, I'm sorry." So like Lisa is owning it, and she's like, "I'm saying sorry." Okay, you guys. Then comes Seth. Okay, okay. Seth, Seth comes in. What's wrong asked- with Seth? No, I know. He comes in and, but like it was a good thing. He comes in and randomly asks a question like, Does all of your guys' pee smell when you eat asparagus? No, what? what? Yeah, like. Yeah, he randomly broke the ice, which is great. We then get back. I know. We we then like get out of the trip and we get to Mary's scene. And you guys, this scene just breaks my heart. So she's entering her son's room with his wife. And you guys, I don't even want to talk about the son that much because like you can just tell like there is something going on with him like they haven't said it yet but i think rumors have it that it's like drugs but she's just trying to be checked into rehab for a drug addiction okay well perfect and andy does say that there's a better scene no no i'm saying like i don't want to talk bad and it is true but andy does say watch and watch what happens live there's even a better scene that happens next week so like hopefully we see more but you just like feel so bad for Mary because she does feel like it's her fault that he is this way because she spoiled him too much. And I just feel so bad for her because, like, she's such a loving mom. And, like, look what happens, you know? Well, this son, her son is her entire life. And so if anyone has dealt with someone who is addicted to drugs, um, it is, like, again, Chantal and I, you know, we've seen it. And it is the – so watching these scenes are very hard to yeah. watch because it's so – you know, it, it's not who – that's not her son right there. And that's not and the, his so, wife. Like, his wife was, like, it just – I was looking at not, them and it's just not like, them. oh, my God. They're I so know. far removed. Uh-huh. And, again, we're saying this just from what we've been experiencing the last couple of years and with someone who had so much life to them and when you get addicted – it, it is the most heartbreaking thing ever. So I am just, 
you don't understand until you have someone like that in your life and you're like, holy shit, this is real. And especially us, like in our world, like we're not used to this. Yeah. So uh, not saying that like in other world, I'm just saying like, we're very sheltered. We grew up very sheltered. We don't see these things. So we see it on TV. And so now that we've seen it and we're watching this, like, I don't know, I you know, I have, like, such a tough time watching these scenes. No, I do, too. And, like, and I just feel really bad for Miri because, like, she does try to call him out. Like, she just, she does say, like, what are we doing? You know, so it's, like, it feels like she's not enabling, but, like, maybe she had it in the but past. But she reminds me of the person her that aunt? we know. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, she reminds me of my aunt because it's, like, well, she's in our home. You know, they're in our yeah. home. Yeah. Yeah. So as long as they're in our home and it's like, no, because like they're look, look at them, they're in your home. And it's like, and first off, I don't like watching anybody eat. So that shit pissed me off. Right. Real quick. <laughs> really? Monk Bing girl. You like love watching these, these um, no, people eat Taco Bell. Like that, like in slowness. <laughs> I don't even know what they were eating. Okay. Like Monk Bing's, it's like, you see the food looks so good. Like, what are you even eating? Are you good? Like, oh, hello. She's trying to have a conversation with you. Yeah, so well, that was sweet. that was like hard to watch, and then we, I guess, Andy does say that we'll see a better, even a better conversation, like with that, and so we'll see how that that unravels. But I am liking, you know, Miri. So they play volleyball, which I don't really care, and then we get to the anniversary celebration. So it looks very nice, and um, they're like, you know, Angie says they want to play this newlywed game. It was kind of weird, but what was the most important part about this is that like Meredith does say, and like we are starting to see that she she says that like their relationship is a little like odd she kind of says the word tension she's like there's tension there but she goes it's not tension and so we see these like little digs that they do to each other so it's like do you see the love that they have for each other or not really like what do you see when you're watching this do you see that they love each other i see that he is someone who doesn't accept her for her so you have to she has to watch how she what she says and it's interesting because she goes to the airport and she surprises him and he loves that and she acts goofy. But when they're around certain people, he wants her to be a certain type of way and doesn't want to be in certain type of situations. And so being with someone like that is hard. Yeah. And that's how I look at their relationship. I just really hope he watches this and sees like how he's how he's he is. He's grumpy. Yeah, like he was. Grumpy fart. Yeah, like, that's like what he is. just because you work so hard, cool. Everyone works. Like I'm so sorry. That doesn't make you. How that doesn't old make. Is he? I, don't I don't even know. Even know. Yeah. And you know, it's just like his hands are crossed when she's like trying to say a nice speech. Like I just everything was off. Like a lot of reflex in me. But we get to Lisa and Justin. They both apologize, which like finally, and then we also get to Meredith and Sean. And it's like. This whole thing is whatever. But the one weird thing about this whole conversation is that Seth inserted himself and goes, this is proof, biatch, and starts yelling. Like, it was very odd that he, you know, called them a biatch. What did you think about it? I, that was weird. Seth is like, yeah. dry, Seth has, like, weird dry humor. Yeah, for sure. Nothing I would get mad at. He's 65 years old. I thought he was a lot older. Oh, I think, I thought he was a lot younger. He, he looks like good. Was it, was it? Oh, no, no, no. It, no, no. I'm talking about Seth saying the biatch. Oh, you I just know, found know, out. I oh, just, okay. No, I, Seth is hot. What do you yeah, mean? I was going to say. So I'm good looking. I don't even know. He looks young. I don't know. He Wait, looks- was it in our Patreon that someone um someone showed that Seth basically works at Big Lots? Like he he's big lodge. No, 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 no. Like he's the corporate, like the corporate, like the main person at big lots, like not the CEO, but someone very important. And it's in the med- Midwest and everyone's like, what's big lots? But we know what big lots is. Like big that's lots like, is like a dying business. I know. That's what everyone's saying. I swear they I'm said this sorry. on our Patreon, you guys. Are we sure? Because no, it was on his LinkedIn. It was on his LinkedIn. I promise. I you promise guys, I'm not it's saying It's a dying this. business. Like all of them close in Michigan. I know, but that's why he goes to Ohio. What the hell's in Ohio? Oh my gosh. Uh, is it big enough? Ohio oh my god he's so good looking I'm looking at his LinkedIn profile. yeah he oh, is man. really cute he's so hot um let's see oh my god he's a senior vice president of big lot told you uh, <laughs> what he's been yeah there, but he's only been there for a year and a month so. yeah like it was like a new job so like that's why he always had to leave but like I don't know it's like he always has new you jobs guys, but big lots is if you guys are from the Midwest like it's at least in Michigan it's absolutely a dying business I don't know my mom goes there all the time so yeah like it's a dying business. I'm telling. <laughs> I don't want to say it's a dying business. They like they've closed so many big lots yeah. here, and there's never cars in big. There's never like nothing in big lots. That is crazy. Good for him though. I mean, he's a VP, yeah. so who cares? Wow, his resume. I'm looking at his stuff. He's 
he's done some impressive impressive things like oh he worked at sears as a head of st- uh s- strategic merchandising okay so that's like sears, help was also a, uh, sears is also a dying business and it died oh my gosh why are we doing that stuff yeah well okay anyway so um chantal uh, wants us to like finish yeah we need to stuff. we need to wrap up my husband just got in the room was like get up because we're about to go to the casino still so that's why we're doing three episodes because we cannot cram all this yeah this is a lot like especially when we when we're really interested in the show like we want to say a lot yeah like we cannot ever cram this much in one episode yeah um so anyways so angie's the one that brings up the grandparents thing okay by the way in this like in this scene oh my god yeah and and then like you know lisa just brings it in and then like the todd goes like this whole like bronwyn and todd thing and like bronwyn does say in her confessionals that todd is the one that embarrassed her in the moment instead of her the ladies which i appreciate that yeah but i'm hoping she tells him that like i'm hoping she like says it to him yeah, that was so embarrassing. I would be mortified. Like, these are new friends. So yeah, I get so this embarrassing. It's an uncomfortable conversation. But for you to, like, talk down to Angie while her... Here's the thing. Todd is talking down to these women while their husbands are right yeah. there. Yeah. It... They're scared, too. My husband yeah. would be scared. Like, me, too. Like, would be scared. Me, too. And like, not, it, like, feel yeah. comfortable seeing the same thing because, like, it's not even worth it. It puts their husbands in uncomfortable situations where it's like, hey, like, I don't like your tone towards my wife. Like, do I have to boss up to you, old man? Like... Again, by the way, he looks a lot older than 65. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, he does. Well, they wake up the next day, but then they show us a flashback of them actually having a good time after dinner, and I love that for them. Um, they end up going to the indie race for an experience, and um, Seth asked the racer if he's single and was for Heather, which was really cute, I thought. you know. And like, we still see Seth here throughout the whole day, so you know, it's not like he left right away. I think it's great that Seth... Is, look, Seth works corporate. Like He can't be taking trips like this, yeah. so... And he's head up, but I think it's great that he has. Like, okay, a, look, you guys, Roxanne has a hard on now for heads because he no, has like he has he's like corporate VP. <laughs> no, I mean, what guys like half the time? Like we're like, what? Do, I don't know. Like, what do they do? Like, what does Justin do now? Yeah, you know, I need to know everything that all these guys are doing. All right, go ahead. Um, when you whispered to her husband, um, Justin, how like you know she's like, why does always Meredith looks pissed off? And I'm sure like when Meredith watches that, like that's not a good thing for a replay. We get to also Sean doesn't like that Seth and them we're calling him Beatrice. It's like I'm over the Sean and Meredith stuff though, and like Sean and Seth. It's like we get it, but it was just whatever. I'm just like Wait, over the is guys. Whitney Rose's last name actual Rose. Well, like that's her, that's her real. It's Justin Rose. Oh, I didn't know that. That was like her middle name. Me too. That's so awkward. <laughs> oh my God. The one thing that is weird here is that Angie doesn't like how she always feels like she keeps extending the olive branch to Meredith and Meredith is not taking it, which I kind of agree. It's like, get over it at this point. Like you guys should be just be friends, you know? Mm-hmm. Oh, we hear your husband doing something. Yeah. Okay. This is where we get to you guys. We keep saying scary, but like this was very unhinged. We get to the part where Bronwyn books the plane. Okay. Back home. And Lisa is being a snotty brat about sitting in coach okay she's being very delulu she's telling john that she'd rather like skip the flight and find a new flight and like not go home to her son right away just because she doesn't want to sit coach like what did you think i mean that's not a i don't know in what universe do you think that that would be smart to act like that yeah, literally and then andy well, did the ever thing, back on watching him us- live and he's oh, like geez. you know i Andy did. Andy, not Angie. Oh. Andy was like, I can't. Angela's like, hell no, I wouldn't care. Andy's like, I kind of would be like that. But it's like, you guys, come on. Like, this is not okay. Like, you guys, we live in this world. What is wrong with you? Listen, I know that we sometimes, like, you know, when she's like, my 40,000, whatever, how much her ring was. And she's like, oh my gosh, it, you know, it, what, like, that's valid. But to be so out of touch for like an hour flight, and and I swear to you, you're right about her husband. He has so much patience for her. So many like, patience. He's like, whatever you want. It's like, no, no, John, you need to have some balls and tell her. I know. My snap out of it. Was like, my husband would lose it. Like, you want to be by your kid. You're willing to wait till we get another flight. Like, are you kidding me right now? You're not being reasonable right now. Yeah. Well, so, the, yeah, and the, basically, like, this episode, I, I'm i over the Bronwyn and Angie. They try to get through it. Like, you know, Bronwyn wasn't really getting her point, you know, with, um, with no, sorry, I meant Bronwyn and Lisa. I'm but like, Lisa does, Angie. I know, Lisa does try to apologize to it, but, like, we'll see where they go. It doesn't seem like they're going to be good friends after Chantel this, to be honest. Chantel wants to go to the casino, yo. Yeah. She is, she's ready. She's like, you know, I'm on vacation again. So yeah. I need to go to the casino. Dang, girl. Well, no, no. I think that was really it. Like, when I was watching it, I was like, okay, guys. Like, I, we get it. We get it with you, too. Like, I think Bronwyn really keeps trying to make her point, and Lisa's not hearing it. So it's like, let's move on. Let's move on, both of you. Right. But that was it. And, like, you know, Angie was on Watch What Happens Live, and, you know, it was pretty not that interesting. Yeah. Um, but I like this episode. It was a lot of guys, a lot of men, a lot of them talking. So it's like, ooh, give them 
phone and give them attention and a mic and they're ready to go. <laughs> I know. I thought this episode was so good. Yeah. Salt Lake City is really good. I'm really sad Orange County is ending. We have one more reunion episode, right? Well, we have Beverly Hills. And then Beverly Hills starting. But, like, let's see if it's good. Yeah, I think Beverly Hills is going to be good. Okay. There's more stuff that happened, like, that I'd want to talk about, but we'll just... Oh, what? No, it's fine. We'll just talk about it. No, no, I want to know, because, like, did I not write notes about it? No, it's, like, hot topics type of thing. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Save that for the third episode, girl. Well, no, we could... So, join our Patreon, Mm. um, and we'll we'll touch on it on our Patreon. But next week, we will do three episodes, because this was a lot. Yeah. Um, but hopefully and Chantel's we want to touch Potomac, by the yeah, way. and hopefully mm. Chantal's home next week. So, <laughs> Seriously. Like, so we don't have to be doing this, you know? It's, it's been a lot for Roxanne. Thank you. So <laughs> I'm here and I'm serving, okay? Y'all, you, you let her, t- you tell her. Oh, gosh. All right. Well, thank you guys for listening. We Bye, guys. It. Okay, wow. She's on <laughs> <advantage>. Bye. <laughs>